Kia ora, good morning, and welcome to another super fantastic, sparkling, winning Wednesday. Yes! Oh, I love Wednesdays. It's one of my favorite days of the week. I only have seven favorite days. Um, anyway, so how's your start to the day going? I am off to a phenomenal start this morning and an okay night's sleep, but never good that she knows. Um, <laughs> but now it's time to get moving for the day and get out there and get all this amazing stuff done. Oh, I am super excited. I got to go and, um, <sighs> oh, hang on. The jets are flying. Oh, the jets are flying today. Yay. Um, we've already had several go overhead. <laughs> Haven't heard any in about 30, 40 minutes, probably because I have my noise cancelling headphones on at the time. Oh, love the sound of jets. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't remember what type of fighter jets that they have at Luke. Hmm. I'm going to have to go look that up because I can't remember. Um, yeah, I can't remember. But they sound awesome anyway. Uh, so, uh, winning, winning, winning. We're talking about winning. Winning Wednesday, yes. So what wins are you celebrating this week? Please let us know in the comments below so we can get to celebrate with you because we love to celebrate wins. And the reason we celebrate wins is that when you celebrate your wins, they become more memorable. And it is the, it is the, um, it is the memorable wins that we, met, that we remember that help propel us forward onto, onto future wins. So the more you celebrate your, your victories, um, it doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter how small. When um, we were going through Brad's battle, um, battle cancer, cancer battle, we were going through his cancer journey and everything else, we celebrated the little ones. It didn't matter if his CA levels dropped three points. And the CA levels are the blood markers that they used to, um, to um, see if there's possible cancer in the system. And when there is, when they know there's cancer, getting those CA numbers down is important. Um, so if we dropped three points or four points, like we had, we celebrated. And the doctor would always try to kibosh that by turning around and say, "Oh yes, but you can have, um, you know, there's just a little variation. It's not, it's not that significant." To us, that was a massive significance. He may, but from the medical perspective, it may not have been a, um, it may not have been a significant loss in the CA levels when they were dropping. But to us, any loss was better than any gain. You know, we were we were hit that the numbers were hidden in the right direction, and so we celebrated that. And I don't think he quite got the reasoning behind we were celebrating. Oh, we were down three points. Yes, medically it may not mean a lot to us. It's a step in the right direction. I mean, we're going we're on, we're on the downward slope, so let's keep going down that slope on the CEA levels. Um, you know, getting through a, getting through a chemo treatment was a celebration because it meant we have one less more to worry about. Because <laughs> chemo was not fun, although. When we first first time we did rounds of chemo and stuff, Brad would just stretch out. They had these, we were in a private doctor's office, and he would have these rooms that had these big leather, and they were big leather ones because my husband was six foot five, and he his length was in his torso. So a lot of problem he has with recliners is they wouldn't come up high enough to support the back of his head. These ones did, so he liked these ones. They had like the they had like the big recliners. Um, I, and if, if he did not have a key and they would always have, they had two rooms where they had two recliners in each. Then they had the horrible visitor's chair, which were these wooden things with this piece that went across your back, which was very uncomfortable. You got to sit in these things for three hours. Um, cause I would sit there and talk with Brad, but if he didn't have a chemo buddy in that room that day, I hopped in the other recliner and I stretched out and I went to sleep <laughs> if I could or read or whatever we sent to Brad would typically just stretch out and he'd go to sleep and that would be it. Other days, and he would put his headphones on um, and he would listen to Anya. That was his relaxation thing. And every time we finished another chemo treatment um, for us, because we knew how many he had to do, it was a victory because that's one less we have to worry about. We're one step closer to getting this thing beaten. And so it was, you know, it was just little baby steps. Some people think, oh, it's just a treatment. You still got, you know, five to go, seven to go, whatever. It's one list that we have had to go. We've survived another chemo treatment. We're on the path. We're getting rid of this thing. You know, um, so it's it's taking those small victories and turning them into celebrations because it's that momentum. It's a great thing on your psyche as well. That if you are celebrating, celebrating as you go along, you're going to get more celebrations coming. Um, so it's that boomerang effect. Whatever you put out, you get back. If we're putting out great vibes, celebration vibes because of our win, we're going to get those vibes coming back to us somewhere down the road. So we're just going to have it reflected back. Um, 
and on our training call this morning, I heard a couple of things that just stuck out to me. And it has to do with winning as well, because if you are not being consistent in what you do each day in business, how can you expect the success to follow? So you've got to have your daily method of operations where, you know, what is it that you do every morning consistently every single day? When you sit down at your desk to start your work work day or your business day or whatever it is, when you sit down, what is it that you do? What's the first thing that you do? What's the second thing that you do? And you keep going down the list. You know, these Facebook lives in the morning are part of my consistent, are part of my daily method of operation. It's part of my consistency. Those calls I do every morning, Monday through Friday for the training, that's part of my daily method of operation is getting on those calls. Um, because it helped both help me get into this in the right mindset to go out there and get my business growing and get my businesses growing and um, doing what needs to get done. Um, but one that I loved was that I heard because people were talking about being comfortable and stuff. I have gotten I have been kicked so far outside my comfort zone by coaches and men, excuse me coaches and mentors that I have I have no idea where my comfort zone is. Um, <laughs> and I keep telling people, I keep telling them, I said, you know, if you're in this must, especially if they're new to the mastermind group, I said, get ready to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because I said, you're going to be spending a lot of time going, I really don't want to do this. It's, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, but do it anyway. It's, um, you know, Richard Branson always says, you know, say yes, then figure it out. And that's, basically how I ended up doing these Facebook lives. Casey challenged me back in July of 2019 to do a, he said, I have a challenge for you. I said, okay. I'd already said yes. There was my first yes. <laughs> so we already knew I was on board. I didn't even know what the challenge was. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to listen. He turns around and says, I want you to do a Facebook live every day for a year. I went, okay. And it's like, without fail, I says, not a problem. It's done. I was already in that space that I needed to be in. He challenged me, I said yes, and then afterwards I thought about it, I thought, oh crap, I have to do 365 days of lives? <gasps> and then I realized that 2020 was a leap year, I thought, damn it, I gotta do 366 days, not like I got cheated, I got put into another day, got another day added on, damn it, damn him. And I, you know, I cursed them up and down the thing, but you know, I was glad I did it, I started on August the 1st, and you know, here we are, day 784. Um, kind of a little longer than a year. <laughs> We've already passed the two-year mark. We passed that on you know, July 31st was our um, was the end of our second year of doing Facebook Lives. And uh, so, you know, we still got, we got to go to July 31st next year, and that'll be our three-year mark. What will we do after that? Probably keep doing it because it is such an ingrained part of my day that, um, you know, I've come close once of not meeting my goal. You know, there was that one that I did a few weeks ago that was at 11.52 p.m. Um, because I suddenly realized I was brushing my teeth when I was getting ready for bed that, did I do my life tonight? I don't know if I did my life tonight. I know I had to get it as soon as I, because I'd been on, I can't remember what day it was, I'd been on something and then I had to get into go take Sefi for a walk. And I, and I had my notebook sitting here on the table open, ready for my live. And, um, and we went out, we came back and I just got into my evening routine because we come back from walk, get into the evening routine. And then I'm brushing my teeth and I'm like, did I do my live when I got back? And so I came and checked and I was like, no, it was like, oh, and my notebook is still sitting here open. It's like quickly turn every, turn everything back on. And because um, my computer had gone to sleep, I had to wake it all up, make sure that I still had the, um, had to go turn the, the MiFi on because I turned the internet off already. <laughs> so it took me a few minutes, which is why it was 11.52. And I'm like looking at the clock going, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Got to get in before midnight or I have to start back at day one again. And that ain't happening. <laughs> I was not prepared to go back to day one. I was pushing it through, but I got through and I got that live done. And now I make, and now it's, um, it is scheduled in my calendar. It has always been scheduled in my calendar for the, um, for the evening one. Um, the morning ones, it depends on what's happening in the morning and how behind, if I get behind time and all that, but it got done. It was that commitment to getting it done. So um, one thing I learned this, and I don't know how I got on that whole tangent, because I was talking about comfort zone. Okay, yes, it's stepping outside the comfort zone. So say yes, then figure it out. Um, and as everybody will tell you, there is no growth in the com there's no growth in being comfortable. If you're comfortable, you ain't gonna grow. Your business is not gonna grow. You're you know, you are not gonna be as productive and creative as you could be if you just stood up and took a step outside that zone. Just take that, you know, get to that area where it feels a little uncomfortable. Oh, this doesn't quite feel comfortable. I'm a little nervous about this. 
take the step anyway. I challenge you, if you're if you are thinking about doing something for your business or something in your personal life and you've got that little tingle going up your spine and you're sort of like squirming a little bit because it's making you nervous, you're not getting comfortable, take a step. Take a step forward and do it anyway. When you take that step forward and do it anyway, it's like, well, what the hell was all that fuss about? <laughs> there is a great video that Will Smith did when he talked about the first time he went skydiving and about how you're standing there, you know, like the spread cat holding onto the window frame. You've got some guy strapped to your back and you're about to go falling out however many feet you fall. Um, and you're at that moment, at that pivotal moment where all we've got to do is take a step. Talk about being uncomfortable. I don't see the point of jumping out of a perfectly good airplane with a piece of silk on my back. I know many people have done it. I watched videos of my nieces doing it the other day and I was like, okay. Um, and then I was like, yeah, what would that be like? And I thought maybe my, you know, I would probably pass out with my heart rate going so fast or something. I don't know. Um, and, but you know, it was, and he said, once you take that step, he says, everything changes. And when you, and if you think about it, when you're too nervous, to, when you're nervous about doing something and you take that step forward, everything changes in that, in that instant, everything changes. And when that change happens, magic happens. So, and you be, and you have now taken another step of victory over that fear. And what is fear? Um, um, somebody said it the other day, um, false evidence appearing real is one of the ones, but there's, there's a couple of other ones that I'm trying to remember. Um, so it's about arising and, and doing it anyway. Um, yeah, just get up and do it. Just do it. That's my challenge to you today. If you get to a point where you're nervous about talking to somebody about something or making a commitment to something for your business or making a commitment to yourself for yourself for taking care of yourself for your health it could be you wanted to go on a trip and you don't and you're like oh, i'm more nervous about it anyway take that first step do it anyway remember say yes then figure it out that's it from us for today have a super fantastic sparkling rest of your winning wednesday we will be back later on this evening and as a reminder, if you would like to, if you have any questions about researching your family tree, um, you can private message me those questions or put them in the comments below and we will answer them one evening on our evening Facebook Live. So we'll see you around 6 p.m. this evening, Pacific time. Hey, Konero.